أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي حدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتل لولا أن حدانا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد نبده رسول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يتي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم وقال رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من الإسلام لا خمس هدة لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وإكامة الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وحج البيت وصوم رمضان صدق we praise and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His kindness and His mercy that He has guided us, guided us to this way of Islam, the way of those who will have success, success in this life and the life hereafter. And because of this very important point, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being a bringer of good news, and the warner has also been for us, has also been for us, and he still is the example as to how we can achieve the goodness of this world and the goodness of the world to come. And most importantly, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be saved from the fire. Respected brothers and sisters, it is the time of Hajj. It is a time of Qurbani. It is a time of making moves, journeying. It is a time of great reflection. So today, inshallah, my little reminder to myself and you will be taken from chapter 9, verse 24. And these reminders we should look at it in the light of the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam has earned the honor as the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what did he do? What were the actions? And what were the circumstances he had to face? in his everyday living so that he has been given such a title and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have promised him that not only the good of this world did he enjoy but inshallah he will also enjoy the goodness of the akhirah. There are times because we face a very cunning enemy we face an enemy from within us. We face an enemy that we do not see and we do not know in terms of the strategies or the ways by which he seeks to distract us so that we be denied the good of this world and be denied the good of the hereafter and to join him in the fire. 
A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Respected brothers and sisters, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has been so kind and merciful to have exposed His plans, to have exposed the avenues, the areas in which Satan or the devil or the enemy of mankind will seek to distract us, will seek to have us do things that will be displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So because our time is limited, we will go into the verse and we will try to make some reflection. But like I said before, always keep at the back of our mind the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The story of the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Especially that family of his that is connected to the rituals of Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, A'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ بَاءُكُمْ قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ بَاءُكُمْ وَبُنَاءُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اِبْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ تخشون كسادها ومساكن ترضونها أحب إليكم من الله أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ There is a verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us about ourselves. يَا يُحَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَالْتَنْزُوا النَّفْسُ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكون كالذين نسوا الله فعنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون. In those verses, Allah subhanahu wa taala brings our mind's eye to a goal. A goal has been set for us. The tomorrow, the day when we will stand before Allah subhanahu wa taala. That we should fear Allah and we should be mindful of what we are providing, what the angels are recording for us, especially the one on the right that is recording our good deeds. And we should be mindful and careful and cautious not to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the consequences of forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he, we will forget our own selves. What is it to forget ourselves? Is it to forget our name? It is to forget the purpose of our creation. So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this chapter 9, verse 24, say if it be, that your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your mates, your kindred, the wealth that you have gained, the commerce in which you fare a decline, or the dwellings in which you delight, are dearer to you than Allah or his apostle, or the striving in his cause. Then wait until Allah brings about his decision. And Allah guides not the rebellious. 
who are these people and what are these things that have been mentioned? Our fathers, our sons, our brothers, our mates, our kin, our kit and kin, our wealth, our business, our properties, the homes that we delight in, respected gathering. Is there a person on this planet except that these situations face them? Is there any one of us who would not have to be, if we are not yet a father, at least we are a son or a daughter? Or are we going to have mates, we have blood relations? And what is our ambition? Why is it that our parents send us to school and encourage us and guide us to get a good education? Because we would want the good things of this world, the wealth of this world, the commerce of this world, the dwellings of this world that brings with it power and status, that brings with it fame, that brings with it the ease and the comfort of this world, the first things that we enjoy here, the security that we want. These are the things that we generally cannot do without, and these are the things that occupied most of our minds and our thoughts, even as we our, ourselves try to learn the ways and means. Brothers, come forward, please, come forward. There's much more room in front. Brothers need to get in, please, there's much room. Fill up the gaps. There are room on the right side here, my right, and there are room over here, please. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning these things for us. Why? Because our enemy. Because our enemy. And to reflect on the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam, I bid you to remind yourself to go back and look at his life from the time he was a boy, that he was a son and his dealings with his father, and his dealings with his relations, and his dealings with the world of his time, and the power of the world of his time, and to deal with his spouse, and his babe boy, and to deal with all the situations that he had gone through, that today, we are observing and celebrating and commemorating his life in so many different ways. But don't forget the purpose of all these things. These things makes us part of the community of those who submit themselves, those who are Muslims. But respected brothers and sisters, it is the intention with which we live it is the intention with which we deal with each other. It is the intention with which we will do things. We have been doing things before, and today we will do and we will make intention to continue to do. It is this intention that is foremost in terms of its importance and in terms of the results that we will earn. Our fathers, can we help except that we should love them? So what is the challenge? If it be that your fathers, there are many fathers, unfortunately, who are calling their sons and daughters into a road that only bring the good of this dunya as we have been reminded of people who will make the Hajj and they will ask the special prayer, O oh Allah, Rabbana tina fi dunya hasana. Because their concern and their intention and their ambition is to accumulate that of this world. But they are not the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mentioned as the special ones. 
the ones that will pray rabbana tina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab annar so in dealing with our fathers and their encouragement and their guidance that they are giving us we have got to ensure that whatever instructions whatever they are imparting to us so that we make our intention as to what we want to be and what we want to achieve that it is going to take us not some time in the future but from the initial steps that we are taking because some time in the future doesn't belong to us it is today that belong to us for now that allah has given us so if the intention is made correctly sincerely with a consciousness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when jibrail alayhi salam came to teach us true prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam his companions about the deen he talked about something named ihsan and nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam explained it what was the explanation he gave us is that we worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though allah subhanahu that we are as though we are seeing allah and even though we are not going to be able to see allah the consciousness that allah is looking at us so the intention for tomorrow is made today and that intention based on the guidance that we get from our fathers <coughs> and for fathers allah says and if it be your sons what is it that the sons are encouraging what is it that the sons are craving that they want ibrahim alayhi salam wanted to serve allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his father wanted him to serve the idols each and every one of us have got to make that decision each and every one of us will be confronted with the idols of this world in many forms some of them have been exposed here but each and every one of us have our own challenges and sometimes those challenges are whether we smile or we don't because whether we smile or we don't can make a big difference in situations whether we say sorry or we don't whether we say hello or we don't these little things make a big difference in our lives and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and your brothers and your mates and your kit and kin how do we deal with these relations respected gathering how do we deal with them do we deal with them based on the guidance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or do we deal with them based on our feelings and our emotions and the history of our families and the status of our families and the wealth of our families and the area from which we come and we can go on but the important thing to keep in mind how do we deal with these relations spouses we decide we want to get married how we decide how do we decide in choosing our spouse see where the niyat is important because that spouse that we will get involved with or attached to or married to we will have to be dealing with them day and night tomorrow inshallah and the day and the day until allah decides and the wealth it is very easy for us to gather wealth because there are so many ways and means to gather wealth if we want to accumulate wealth it is easy and i'm sure many of us have chosen our ways and what means we are going to use allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us brothers and sisters and these reminders are golden for us because why we have the privilege of understanding through what means and these here are those situations that we can't accept but we have to face them we have to face these situations and sometimes we take them for granted 
Ibrahim salam, and the love for his wife and his little son to leave them in the desert where there was no habitations, there was no water, there was no security. There was only one thing. In the decision that was made in the heart of Ibrahim salam, and the acceptance of his wife, Hajrat Hagar, Hajar, was that if this is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and based on that intention to obey Allah, even though the situation seems impossible, but the intention and the sincerity and the trust in Allah, this is what we have to put in front of our fathers and sons and brothers and mates and kit and kin and wealth and commerce and buildings and everything in our lives, even our own desires. Are we ready to make this type of qurbani, respected brothers and sisters? Let us ask ourselves, what is the thing I love most? Let us ask ourselves, what is the thing that has been worrying me most night and day that I get nervous thinking about it? Let us ask ourselves, not only what, but who. We are helpless creatures in a world that is where we have no power. We are helpless in every sense of the world. The natural things of nature can become the greatest threat to our lives. The sun, we need it, we can't do without it. Yet, it can be a real catastrophe, a real disaster for us. The moon, the earth, the wind, the trees, everything that surrounds us that we strive to accumulate, that Allah has demonstrated in the life of Fir'aun and his people. All the things that they want and the things that they were seeking to guard themselves against because they were the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those very things were the cause of their destructions so let us not allow our fathers or our sons our brothers our mates our kit and kin our commerce our wealth our buildings to be the cause of destruction of our own selves respected brothers and sisters this is a time of reflection this is the time of great sacrifice. These days that are coming are the days are the best of days. Because why? These are the days when we can either make or break our purpose in this world. We can make up our minds. We can reflect. We can correct every little deficiency in our dealings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can correct our intention and we can sit with our families and our relations and our spouses and we can discuss that, listen, we have been going down the wrong road thinking that we are going aright. Because remember when Ismail salam, was and his father Ibrahim salam, built the Kaaba, they were worshipping one Allah. And by the time Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came on the scene, Kaaba was filled with idols. We do not want this to happen to us. We are worshipping one Allah at this time. Yaqub alayhi salam, at the time of his leaving this world, asked his sons what they would worship after he has left this world. We have to ask ourselves this question. Are we putting in place the necessary actions, taking the necessary action to put in place the necessary apparatus in our lives and the lives of our families and the lives of our relation and the way we do things in this world to ensure that down the line we are just about four generations from the generations that came from India, maybe five or six now in a little way. And we have lost so much 
of the values. We have lost so much. I give you one quick example. You remember the days when we used to go to school? I'm talking about the 60s and those older can talk about the 50s and the 40s. But in the 60s and the 70s and the early 80s, it was an embarrassment for a girl going to school that her slip should show below the hemline of her uniform. It was a great embarrassment for a girl that her slip that she's wearing under her skirt should drop below the hemline and it should show. Is that value there today? So you, when we are saying we are losing brothers and sisters, we have got to think deep and we have got to use the example that Allah has given us in the life of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy to hear and to obey and that it, make, it makes it easy for us to understand our responsibilities and that this book not only be a book for occasional recitation or for recitation especially only in Ramadan but that it be a source for us to spend time every day with it so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and guidance will come to us and his help that we make the correct intention inshallah that at the end like Ibrahim alayhi salam we can celebrate with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have to offer us the Jannah Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafana wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikri al-Hakim wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum ajma'in inna huwa ka Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah ina ahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udu bilahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina ma yahdihi lahu fala mudillala wa ma yudlilhu fala hadiyala wa nashahadu an la ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashahadu anna muhammadan abduhu rasul awudu billahi min ayshaytan ar-rajim إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إنا لذكرك والشكرك وحسن بارتك اللهم اغفر لي حينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكرنا وانسانا اللهم من أحيته منا فاحيا للإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه ولا الإيمان ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا أذاب النار ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكنا أذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجيب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى على وعلى وأز وجل وحم وتم وأكبر وآخر دعوان الحمد لله واكم الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر